Next Wave DB's coverage of NAB 2011 is made possible by LCD Viewfinder, the essential accessory for DSLR video, CPM Film Tools, your lightweight solution for caging the beast, Manhattan LCD, the affordable solution for high definition monitoring, BNH, the professional source for photo, video, and pro audio. Hey, this is Sean with Next Wave DV. We're here at AJA, and I have Tony with me. We're going to kind of go over some of the new products we have, and also the Kai, uh, K Key Pro. Key Pro. There we go. See. <laughs> all right. So yeah, go ahead and let me know about it. Sure. Well, um, first of all, about two years ago, we uh, released the Key Pro, which is the larger unit here. Um, was the first unit to really do ProRes recording directly from the camera onto discs. Take those discs right to your system copy it on and you can start working immediately. So that was really kind of a revolutionary workflow for people to be able to get from the camera into editorial that fast. Um, Key Pro Mini, which we announced at IBC last year, uh, started shipping a few months back and builds on that same technology, just in a smaller form factor, uh, a little more camera friendly, works really well with some of the new smaller form factor cameras that are out there. And uh, basically the same concept, recording directly to ProRes in four different flavors. Um, and then these are actually recording directly to compact flashcards. Um, that gives us about 35 minutes of record time at ProRes HQ. And uh, the whole system is really designed to be mounted everywhere. We've got a whole variety of mounting options. Um, there's a mounting plate that's a nice little cheese plate here um, that gives us just a ton of options for sticking this thing just about anywhere on a camera. Um, at this show, we're announcing a new firmware update for the Key Pro Mini. Um, when it shipped, it has an active, it has a land, uh, sorry, a lank port on the back. So the lank port on the back is active now in the version 2.5 firmware update. Um, that allows you to, if you have a lank based camera, be able to trigger the system to start recording and stop um, if you have a remote or directly off the camera itself. So it just gives a few more workflow options for people that were, uh, you know, maybe shooting time of day time code or using an HDMI signal out of a camera that didn't have embedded time code, which is normally how we trigger the recording on the unit. Um, so that's one of our bigger updates, as well as adding a few more uh, file formats, uh, sorry, a few more frame rates to the system. So we're supporting 1080i60 now and 720p60. Um, and we've certified a few more cards. We've got a, a page on our website where people can go and check out what cards are certified to use with the unit. And we want to make sure that you know anything you're going to record on this is going to be guaranteed to work. So you know we're really strict with our recording uh, testing process. And what kind of uh, specs uh, for when you record the files, like uh, as far as MBPS and uh, like color spacing? What what do you what do you get there? Yeah, you're recording the video signal directly out of the camera. So whatever the camera is putting out as far as a Rec. 709 color space, um, and then as far as bit rate, it will depend on the, the ProRes format. You know, we support HQ, LT, 422, and then the proxy resolutions, which can make a really nice light file. Um, but the HQ resolution uh, is the highest bit rate available, and that, that gets you really the highest quality recording. What kind of inputs, yeah, what signals do you receive here? You got the, the HD-SDI and the yeah, HDMI? Yeah, spin it around for you. You can kind of see on the back. We've got SDI in and out, HDMI in and out, and then we've also got professional XLR audio connections. We can handle up to eight channels of audio through the embedded SDI or HDMI as well. But having those extra connections on there gives you options if you're running additional audio, not necessarily camera audio, but you've got a boom or a, another microphone, you can run right into that unit, and it'll support uh, line, mic, or phantom power directly on that unit and record directly into the ProRes files. So a couple of the other things that we have going on at the booth, the new announcements, um, we've got our Kona 3G card, which is an existing card. We actually uh, introduced it at IBC last year, and now we're, uh, we're releasing an updated firmware for that card, and through a software firmware update, we've enabled 4K playback on the card. So it had four SDI ports on it, two for input, two for output, but they were actually bi-directional ports all along. So now we've enabled it so that those can be four output ports so we can do a 4K output directly to a monitor through four SDI's cables. Um, and that's, that's actually been really well received here at the show. Uh, we've got a few, a few technology awards for it uh, as a sort of product, you know, product of the show. The other technology that we're showing here at the NAB is our codename Riker. This is actually a bit different from codename Phaser. This is much more of a horsepower technology demo. You know, we've come up with 
a, a system that's a modular system where we can have cards that we slide in and out and they can have different functionality on them. So in this first implementation, we're just showing kind of one option, which is an arbitrary scaler. Typical scalers are usually set up to optimize between different resolutions. So go from 720 to 1080, let's say. This is a true arbitrary scaler, so you can re rescale an image to just about any resolution you want, from one pixel all the way up to 5K. Uh, so it's just a ton of horsepower that's sitting in there. And in addition to that, we've got the capability of doing high frame rate stereo, 2K stereo up to uh, 60 frames per second, and even 4K stereo up to 30 frames per second. High frame rate's something that's come up recently with James Cameron's announcements about wanting to get into more high frame rate um, production as a way of really smoothing out the image look. So, you know, something like uh, Riker is a possible solution for that where we can drop something in and have a technology solution that takes something that's at a sort of science project phase and actually make it a, a legitimate workflow. All right, well, thank you very much for your time, Tony. Appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, thank you. Subscribe to us on YouTube and visit nextwavedv.com for more news and training for video and filmmakers.